What's going on guys, T2RX6 here, back for a Marvel figure review. This is the uh, amazing Yamaguchi, powered by Revel Tech, so we're just going to call it Revel Tech Deadpool. When I saw that there was a Revel Tech Deadpool coming, I was real excited, uh, and then I found out that he was pretty well sold out everywhere, and he was going to be hard to get, and uh, yeah, I never got one. Well, a friend of mine, Demetrius, he sent this to me and is letting me check it out. Uh, he thought that perhaps people should be informed on this guy, and I am here to inform. Let me just go and say this. If you bought this guy and you're happy with this guy, I'm happy for you. Um, if it's going to hurt your feelings that someone's going to hate it, you probably want to turn this off now. Because it is awful to me. So, here's your five second warning to go ahead and shut the video. And, uh, yeah, we're going to review it. So this is a Revel Tech figure, and Revel Tech to me is the inferior, uh, I guess it's the ancestor to the figure arts. I feel like Revel Tech existed first. Yeah. So this guy, basically what this amazing Yamaguchi intends to do is make a figure that is super poseable. Now, like, you can get that kind of thing out of his arm. Which is a bit weird, like most humans don't really bend that way, but whatever, comic book characters do. And, uh, that's pretty cool. You get a good range of posability out of this guy. The problem is the sacrifices you've had to make to make that happen are not worth it to me. Um, like, first of all, his, his shoulder is just... That one Revel Tech joint there just doesn't look good. You had to make the arm so skinny specifically to bring it across like that. Uh, which is okay. You know, this is distracting. This is the coolest thing in this box, in my opinion. Let's get it out of the way so we can really see this figure. Um, but there's so many concessions made to make him poseable. I mean, like, the whole underside of the arm doesn't look good. In any kind of pose like this, it looks terrible. And I think the static pose isn't all that good looking either. Um, coming down to his elbow here, like, like, look at that. I mean, obviously I have it on a, a slight tilt there. It should be like this, but, like, you know, if you do anything to try to make that, you know, giving a thumbs up in a direction or something like that, that doesn't look good. And let's also couple it with the fact that he's got a giraffe neck, so to actually make that look good, you kind of have to take his head and bring it all the way down. If you don't, it's even worse. So, yeah. That's an excellent looking Deadpool head, right? Gotta keep it down pretty hunched. The more hunched, the better he ends up looking. Uh, if it looks like he actually ends up having a spinal problem, that's probably where he ends up looking the best. Um, to show you these joints, like, look how bad that looks. Now, there's going to be people out there who are going to say, yeah, but he gets all those comic accurate poses and all that stuff, and that's cool, and I feel you. Um, the problem is, is that no matter what I personally do for my own collection, like, I can never get a figure in a pose that I think is going to look awesome on this shelf. And let me just show you. Like, so here we go. Like, this is obviously the figure, and he can get these really cool poses. Like, I can't emulate that. Um, I guess I could do this one. That's probably the closest one I could do. Uh, he does come with a stand. I forgot to mention he does have it. Uh, I'm not going to take it out. It's all nicely packaged, uh, so we won't do that. But, you know, here's the... Uh, you know, like that jumping pose with the guns across his body and stuff. And you can do all that. And that's real nice. And for a lot of people, that's going to make this guy worth his cost. But for me, you know, for what he can do in the special poses, he can do absolutely nothing in the, uh, you know, the static pose. So if I were to stick him on the shelf and he was maybe supposed to be kind of fighting Wolverine or something like that on the shelf, like, I just don't feel like I can get any great just, you know, him swinging a sword type pose. Um, there's just so many flaws with regard to that. He does have the sword here. Uh, it just plugs right into the back. And this bothers me a lot too. Uh, he comes with these and they just, they're very, very tiny pieces of plastic. So it'd be very, very easy to accidentally shear them off. Uh, and they don't really plug into here very well. In fact, it almost looks like uh, right from the factory there, it's cracking, the scabbard. I don't know if that's the paint or the actual scabbard, but 
this just plugs in and it just I don't know it's very scary uh, I don't feel like you know you take one fall off a shelf and that sword's broken forever he also comes with this foot stand because there's pretty much no way you're gonna get him to stand up on his own without it uh, even with it it's most of the time he's falling over uh, there are two swords obviously uh, since the swords don't pull out of the scabbard you get separate swords <sighs> so I'm in two minds about this obviously the scabbard looks best when it doesn't have to accommodate the sword. But there's a number of problems with this scabbard. And let's just let's pull this out here. Here's problem number one. Okay, here's the scabbard. Here's the sword. Uh, for reference, this sword is bigger than the scabbard. So if you're really paying attention to it... Um, yeah, these are not the swords that are being housed in this scabbard, even though the hilt would seem to imply they are. That bothers me. I, I know it would make the scabbard a little bit bigger and a little bit less realistic looking if you could just slide the swords in, but to me that's a detail that I like in my action figures. Um, so the fact that this doesn't do that kind of disappoints me. Now your mileage may vary. You may prefer this just because... Like I said, it does kind of look a little more realistic when, you're, when your scabbard actually uh, accommodates the, uh, the blade, like, directly on the blade. But it's not for me. So his next accessories are the guns. And no, we're not talking about the guns that are in the holsters here. No, 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 that would be too nice if we could do what G.I. Joe did and have something there. Which, by the way, what's up with this belt? Uh, I understand that it's there so you can kind of flex him around. But that belt looks so stupid. Like, it's on this little ball joint in the back here. And there's just never any way that I feel like it sits on his hips and actually looks right. Like, it's always hanging off a little. It doesn't look good to me. Uh, it was a poor decision, in my opinion. Now, getting back to the guns, we've got one, two, three. Uh, we are only given two guns like this. And once again, whatever guns he's got in here are not the guns that he's carrying uh, because it's a different size. Now, again, it's probably an aesthetic reason, but for me, like, even though it's a little goofy on a G.I. Joe because the holster has to be so big, like, there's no reason that these guns couldn't have clipped in on here. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have a Marvel uh, Legends or whatever they were uh, back when, I believe, Toy Biz owned them, Deadpool, that actually had guns that went into holsters and stuff, and that's awesome. Again, there's a knife down here, no knife in the box, no knife pulling out of here, so instead you have this rubberized good that's just kind of a limp little knife uh, based on his packaging. That makes me angry. Like, I really don't like these types of things being all over him and not being able to like arm him up or disarm him or have him pulling a sword out of the sheath uh, you'll never get a cool pose where you know maybe this sword is gone and he's kind of reaching behind his back and pulling the sword out of the sheath which would look awesome not gonna happen he can't do it anyway because he looks terrible um, let's talk about well before we go on to his actual articulation, let's talk about his other accessories. Um, he does come with two gun holding hands, uh, or sword holding hands, which I think looks absolutely terrible for a sword because, you know, who holds the sword with their trigger finger out? But, I mean, it holds it admirably. Uh, admirably. I can't speak today. He's making me so angry. <laughs> oh, I can't even say angry right. Jeez. Piss me off, Deadpool. Anyway. Yes, he holds it admirably, and uh, I think I still said it wrong. I'm done with that word. Uh, he has the open hands, which they show in the box, him like reaching for his sword behind his back. Uh, one of them's on. He's got two punchy fist hands. Nothing wrong with that. He's got the two thumbs up hands. That's fine. One of them's on there, obviously. And he comes with this alternate head. Now, the alternate head's where you can kind of have the most fun with this guy. Um, because he comes with this little tray of eyeballs, which I think is pretty cool. Um, hopefully we can show off the eyes here. They're very small. They'd be very easy to lose if you're not careful. Don't worry, Demetrius. I won't lose the eyes. Trust me. All right, jump cut because the eyes didn't want to agree with us, but we got kind of two... 
squinty eyes. Like so. In fact, I think we got the squinty eye and the squintier eye. Yes. And then he has the two heart eyes. Like this. And he also comes with, like I said, this other head with the eyes wide open. And he comes with this little tool. And this little tool is designed so you can take it in here and you can poke his eye out from the back, which in the most awful way you possibly can imagine, kicks his eye out here. And let's just replace this. There goes one of the eyes. Not lost, just flying. So we take that out and then we can go ahead and we can give him his I'm in love eyes. If we can put him in the right side. And it's a cool idea on an accessory. But ultimately, I feel like it doesn't end up, well, at least the heart eyes to me don't end up working quite so well. They look just kind of ridiculous. The paint is not very nice on them. I don't know. It doesn't do it for me. So here we go. Here's what I would think the best combination of eyes would be. The one open eye and the one squinty eye. But there's so little white showing on the squinty eye that it doesn't seem to work. So we'll just kick that one out and let's try the the slightly more opened eye. If we can find the right one. The big problem is when you're kind of going through these things on the desk, you end up trying like three or four of them before you find the right eye. Like that, that to me probably looks the best uh, if you're going to do these types of things with the eyes. And it just pops off the head here like that. And then you can go ahead and put the other head back on like so. Also, I actually didn't realize it until I took this head off uh, that you actually do have the ability to pop these eyes out too. So it actually may be best to put one of these eyes in the wide open one on. I'm not really sure. Um, I guess the difference is in the slight difference in the molding of the head. Mostly it's the mouth right here. Uh, You either have the like flat mouth or the I can see I'm making some kind of expression of disbelief or dislike. I don't know. For this guy being the merc with the mouth and everything like that, like I love Deadpool. Uh, I used to read his comics all the time before he got super popular and was in everything. Uh, Then he kind of fell off the radar for me. But like... One thing about Deadpool is he's always, like, excessive. And, you know, besides his ability to break the fourth wall. Um, And I don't feel like any of these accessories are excessive. We got all these little tiny eye emotion things, which I would say three-quarters of them are useless to me. Um, We got the hands. That's fine. We got the two swords. That's a staple. We got the two guns. That's a staple. Where's his other weapons? If you saw Deadpool, he brought that, like... (laughs) The movie Deadpool, he brought that handbag full of weapons, and he's only got really two, um, the gun and the sword here. That's disappointing. He doesn't even have the knife that that works. I don't know. So anyway, let's get all these accessories to the side, and let's actually talk about some articulation here, and we'll see why else we dislike this figure. So you already saw his super zebra neck, um, which is on a Revel Tech joint here. looks terrible from the back. Um, so we can bring that up and bring this down, and it's still, it just, like that, that looks good to someone. Someone greenlit that one. Okay, sure. I mean, you can do the Superman pose. Flying through the air, that's cool. Um, okay, one final, final thing. I knew his head looked worse than, uh, I had given it credit for. Uh, he did have this little, well, when this comes off, kind of like a neck piece here that if you're not paying attention could get stuck in there. It's just like a little red semicircle here that fits into the head like this to just kind of fill out the back. So from the side angle, you know, it's not quite as bad, but uh, it's actually way better. (laughs) So my apologies that I missed that. Um, Yeah, I didn't want to leave it without mentioning that. We're going to compare it to something in a minute. Uh, The arm joint, you saw how bad that was. It's on this dual ball joint, so you can get plenty of range of motion out of it, which, you know, like when you do things like this, I can see where they're going with it, but I don't need my action figure to do that all the time. 
Um, this is probably a good action figure for someone who takes pictures. Um, you got the diaphragm joint here. You got a waist swivel here. I don't know if it's a ball joint or what, but it's very limited. And it just might be hard to work because of the, the belt. Coming down to the legs, you got the just a ball joint down here, um, which splits quite a bit, but it gets it plenty of range of motion. The thigh uh, is on its own little swivel joint. The knee, like this, the little pad is on its own joint, so that's nice because you can kind of angle it back in so it doesn't look so bad. Uh, the leg down here is on its Rebel Tech joint. Uh, the little toe here, so you get the swivel and everything you need out of that, as you would expect. Um, let's put this, let's put this back, like, and, and this is kind of where I have the problems with this toy, is like, so now I'm going to put him back in his neutral pose, and, like, his legs don't really look very good. I don't know, that doesn't, that doesn't look great to me. Um, you saw the, these already. Uh, I've saved the arms specifically. Uh, we do have the little Revel Tech joints here, which are strange like I don't feel like that hand looks like it actually belongs on that wrist and just like this side looks fine to me this side looks way too big uh, you saw the elbow which is very oddly cut check that out on your shelf that looks like a human being um, yeah you got the rotation here obviously it's rebel tech so the joints just kind of pop out like so if we push him in, there we go. That's the best his arms can go. Coming to the shoulders, these double joints, but watch this. Ready? Let's try to move his arm on this joint. We can turn it this way, but watch what happens when we go this way. Look how scary this is. Do you see that joint splitting apart as we just put even the slightest bit of pressure on there? Like, this is a Rebel Tech that is just going to break at some point in time. And it's both arms do it. You know, it's the Revel Tech system is bad. It's not very good. Uh, it's outdated. Yeah. So here we go. I got another similar priced figure here. This is the SH Figure Arts uh, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Vegeta. And uh, yeah, they're around the same price, roughly. And let's talk about them here. So, like we already said, the thing about this guy is he's designed to do these hyper you know exaggerated comic book poses which i get but it's at the expense of pretty well everything else now vegeta is not going to do that i mean he's just not you can manipulate his joints you know a bit to kind of get that cross arms thing you know like this i mean deadpool can give himself a hug vegeta cannot now a lot of times when this was something that the character did, the figure arts pop this off at the joint and give you just an extra piece to peg in, which is fine with me. What Vegeta can do, and again, keep in mind this is a weaker figure art in my opinion, uh, Vegeta can hold up his arm and look okay from any angle. We'll go ahead and do that. Same thing with our Deadpool here. Trying not to break this Rebel Tech joint. Like, look, I'm having trouble getting his arm up to the side and then rotating it around like it just wants to rotate here I can't get the inner ball joint to rotate on this joint it's just not happening I can't this does not work look I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up breaking that if I try to do that so you know holding our arm out to the side like this we end up having this super super strange like this we can't we can't even get it out to the side that's terrible you know let alone that on all angles it doesn't look so hot uh yeah you know i mean we got we don't have maybe all the articulation here but you still have a good range here uh you do have the bicep swivel you got the double jointed elbow uh let's talk about elbows here so we'll go ahead and pretty well 90 degrees that depending on the musculature of the character that's kind of the elbow you end up with and on Deadpool you get this 
So, which which elbow looks more realistic? The other thing to bring up, like when I'm rotating these, like this feels like it's gonna break. This whole thing feels very fragile. This doesn't feel so fragile, and I've broken some figure arts, uh, but that shoulder is not gonna break. Um, it gets you plenty of range of motion that you need. It's not, again, not the hyper comic book realistic, and you can make them look a little bit weird there. Uh, but it gives you enough to make them like intimidating looking if you want on the shelf. You can kind of pull off all those poses you would want your figure to pull off. And you know, if you are the type of person who is into posing your figure, figure or something, uh, you can pretty well do all that stuff too, you know, while making them look pretty cool. I mean, it works for a figure art. The same really can't be said about this Deadpool. Because, like, okay, let's just say, let's try to get that same exact pose that we have on this Vegeta. And keep in mind, like I said, I'm not someone who's very good at posing a figure, okay? But this is going to be our model right here. We're going to pose him just like that. One arm in, like he's going to punch. So let's go ahead, we'll swap out his hands, which have an awkward angle on some of them. Uh, wrong hand. Swap this one in. So here we go. We got that. Take this one off and put his other fist on. Okay. So we got everything we need to. So we're going to bring this one down to the side. Right here. We're going to make them look this way okay we really can't move his neck such that he can so he just has to kind of you know fairly awkwardly sit there so I guess this is the best we're gonna do we'll extend his arm out like that and kinda bring his legs in kind of like this and this is kind of the best we're gonna get and like that just looks terrible you know and that's that's a simple pose so I figured since the big thing is posability the thing we could try to do is get him posed and I will say that like this I feel like he looks pretty cool and then the illusion is shattered when you look at him from any other angle uh, so, yeah, I just, I just cannot get behind this particular figure. Uh, after taking a look at it in person, I suddenly didn't feel like I was missing much of anything, if anything, at all. Um, it's just, it's just not a great figure. Uh, it looks good in certain, pic certain poses. If you're someone who's really good at posing, especially when you make them look like the comic book, uh, you probably are going to have a good time with this figure. I am not that kind of person. I need one that I can sit on the shelf, stand on the shelf in some minor poses. Um, something that is relatively easy to get into, not hyper comic book looking poses. Uh, so yeah, I know this is a uh, review that some people are probably already in the process of leaving comments about, you know, not agreeing with me, and that's fine. Um, you may love this figure, and if you do, I'm super happy for you. Uh, there's just a lot to be desired here for me. I wish I had my uh, old Toy Biz Deadpool to compare it, uh, just because, you know, outside of these poses, I feel like that one is completely superior. So this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I'll see you next oh, yeah, time. One other thing I wanted to talk about before we got out of here. Um, Deadpool being known for breaking the fourth wall. Uh, his box does come with a bunch of things you can cut out here to give him, you know, the words. Uh, I don't know if the stand has any place to hold it. I don't believe it does. I think it's just a regular uh, Figma stand or uh, Rebel Tech stand that just plugs right into the back here. It also bothers me that you have to destroy your box to go ahead and give him the text bubbles. It would have been real nice if maybe included with this there was another piece of cardboard that had all those text bubbles. But instead you gotta destroy your box so he can say here comes Deadpool or ooh is that a mall? Which I 
Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't understand the reference. Uh, would you just relax? No, I won't because it's not good. And uh, profanity, which should be viewed this way, which is now upside down profanity. I don't understand where you're going with this.